and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to be talking about true metallic bronze we're going to be talking about how to get a realistic bronze effect um, i like painting bronze uh, and by the way a lot of what we say today is also going to be useful for copper um, but we're going to focus mainly on on bronze there is some slight nuance difference to them um, <clears throat> Bronze is obviously a great color. It's useful in a lot of different ways. It's a much more neutral tone than gold, uh, as its true color is generally supposed to be pretty mid-tone brown. Um, if you really wanted to shift, its true color is red uh, or orange uh, as opposed to yellow. So gold has a true color of yellow. In other words, by putting yellow, by putting gold on your miniature, you're effectively adding yellow in your paint composition. Um, whereas when you add bronze, you're adding brown, or maybe at the worst, a, a sort of red-orange. But bronze can often be a tricky color to get look right, and anybody who follows my videos knows that I am an absolute fanatic about true metallic metal. Um, I believe you can make true metallic metal look really, really good and do really interesting things, and I think that most of us don't take true metallic metal as far as we should um, when trying to replicate how metal acts in reality. It's a fascinating substance and the way it interacts with light is really unique. Um, I have lots of previous videos on shading true metallic metal in the style of non-metallic metal and certainly we're going to be doing some of that today. Uh, but the paints I'm going to be using for this are Vallejo Metal Color. Now, again, followers of my channel will know that I believe Vallejo Metal Color is simply the best acrylic metal paint on the market bar none. I have tried all of them. There is no acrylic paint on the market that I know of available in the United States that I have not tried. And this is so far above any of them. Personal opinion, but just so you understand. Uh, now, a lot of the things I say today will be true regardless of whether you decide to use some other paint as well. Um, you can use a lot of the tactics for making your bronze look good regardless of the type. But this first part is going to be focusing specifically on an interesting challenge that arises out of using metal color to do bronze. So Vallejo Metal Color has a huge range of silver paints. As you can see, I get a lot of use out of these. Boy, look at that bottle. Holy moly. Okay, it's seen some use, folks. Um, there are maybe 16 different steel colors in the Vallejo Metal Color range. There are unfortunately only two non-steel colors, gold and copper, and their gold is by default somewhat of a green gold, whereas the copper is very red. You can see that just by looking at sort of the pigment deposits here on the bottom, okay? But that's okay. We can still make a great bronze. So there's an interesting thing I just said. The, the answer to this is hidden in what I just said. As I, as I mentioned, copper is a very red color. And the gold is very green. What do we know about red and green? Well, what you should know is they are complementary colors. And hence, when they cancel each other out, you, make, you get brown. You get a neutral tone. So we're going to take a couple drops of copper here. Specifically, I put in three drops of copper. And we're going to take some of the gold. And we're going to put in one drop. Oh, no, never mind. We can do two. That's fine. <laughs> two drops of the gold. One or two. It really doesn't matter. I tend to stay away from exact recipes anyways because it's not, it's not that important something close, you'll be fine. But then I'm going to take one drop of pale burnt metal, which is a silver with a little bit of brown in it because I want to desaturate this a little bit. Adding silver into this mix is almost like adding white into your normal paint. Okay? So, we mix all those in. And then let's mix them up. And you'll notice what we get is a really nice neutral bronze tone, just like that. Okay? So, 
For this, I'm gonna use this little conversion guy here I've got, and we're gonna give him a nice big bronze shield. So pretty straightforward. One of the reasons I love metal color is because A, it actually can cover extremely well, despite being so thin. Two, it's so thin it makes it easy to paint with. It remains smooth like butter the whole time. You don't get brush strokes in it. You don't have any visible pigment. It just goes on and lays down and looks so crisp and wonderful and clean. Okay. All right, so now we have a nice bronze shield. I'm gonna let that dry for a moment while I set up what we're gonna do next. So also in a previous video, I reviewed the uh, Badger Metalsmith paint set. And one of the interesting, the, the interesting part to me about the Badger Metalsmith paint set, which is a set all about creating your own colored metals. Like there's actually one metal paint in the set, which is silver. And then you mix everything from there. But the way you mix everything is through these ores, which are effectively like really glossy, high density medium inks. And uh, I really enjoyed playing around with these in terms of using these as shading on my normal metal paints. Um, I have found these to be so smooth and effective on your metals or mixing in with your other metals. Like these plus Vallejo metal color have really been my, my method of choice recently for painting metals. But I hear you. You're saying, but Vince, I don't have these Badger ore colors. This is such a unique thing. Like, I'm not gonna go out and buy a whole new set of paints just to get a couple ore colors. Well, first of all, there's like six ore colors in there and the stuff's pretty cheap. But I understand, imaginary person I'm talking to, that's a totally fair pushback. Instead, you could replace whatever I'm about to say with, say, the Scale 75 ink set, which is a wonderful glossy ink set which will do much the same thing and which I've used in some of the previous videos to highlight my true metallic metal. Nothing wrong with it. It's great. It does a wonderful job. But Vince, I don't have this either. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I assume you probably have this because this is one of the most very first things almost everybody who paints buys, which is your old trusty friend Agrax Earthshade. This is gonna make the metal look a little duller because it doesn't have the gloss and I don't like the gloss version of this. I am aware there is an Agrax gloss. I don't like it. I, it the, the mix is different. The addition of the gloss medium did not, does not have the same effect. So, I and I don't like putting actual gloss medium over metal. So, stay away from that. Just accept a slightly duller metal and go on with your life. Okay. So what we're gonna do here, we have the carbon and bronze, which is just a nice way of saying brown and black. It's even in the name, bronze ore. Handy. Okay, so we're gonna take a couple drops of each of those. Now, what we're gonna do is we are going to, back to our guy here. We're gonna go ahead and shade this and I'm gonna use a uh, shade up to the side pattern here. So we're gonna draw the shadows up like this because I assume that he's standing like this. So the shadows are mainly here. They'll catch along this side. This will be, it's kind of a rounded shield. So, and then this would be also lit by a reflective shadow. But for the moment, we're just gonna work on this side of the shield just to make it nice and easy. So I just go straight into my ink, wick off some of my excess there. I'm just gonna pull that. Right up toward the top. Okay. Then what we can do is we can just kind of smooth the edge, but I don't have to worry about it too much. Now, simultaneously, while that's drying, I'm going to take my pale burnt metal, my original silver color that you remember I mixed in here. 
We're going to put a couple drops of that on the palette. We'll do the shield nice and simple. We'll just do a shadow here to, to light reflection here. Easier than trying to do a double sort of reflect. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull some of that pale burnt metal right on to the edge. Okay? Where I'm showing that reflection point. Now what we can do is start uh, working that shadow darker. So as the ink, we want to let the ink totally dry because the ink with this, you will pull it up. So I'll keep working on this. I'll pull a little pale burnt metal over here. I'll mix it with a little bit of my bronze. One of the really fun things about Vallejo Metal Color is you can thin it with just water, which normally you can't do with metallic paints. And it will actually then just make a nice glaze of our bronze, which will bring right down here over the edge. All right, we can smooth that right out. I can do the same thing with my ink over here and my bronze color. And then I can sort of glaze the edge of my shadow and smooth that out. I can take the original color in its pure form with a little bit of extra water and then just come right into the middle. Again, one of the reasons I love these paints is because they actually glaze. Okay. Now, but we need to reinforce that shadow. We need to take it farther. So let's take a little bit of that, that copper ore. Let's grab a bit of that black ore. Bronze has a really, bronze can go really dark in the shadows. There we go. Let's get that, let's get that real dark. Okay. Right. Now, it's going to look a little rough at this stage. That's okay. Don't worry about it. We always have to paint toward things often look rough in the middle. It's not about how they look in the middle, it's about how they look in the end. So I'm just going to reinforce that even a little more. Smooth that out. Make sure I got a nice shadow pulled down. Okay. And now I'm going to let that dry absolutely completely because I don't want it to, I don't want to mess it up in any way. And I'm going to let it dry and then we'll come back and we'll see, you'll see how we snap this right into place. Back in just a moment. All right, we're back. Everything is all dry. Now you can see it looks a little rough at the moment, and that's okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of our sepia, mix it with a little bit of our bronze mixture here. We're gonna thin that down. And we're just gonna very lightly glaze over the top of it and smooth out any of that roughness. And what's great is we can keep pulling more color into this by just having a little of the metal paint on there. We can actually play with how we want the color to be. How bronze do we want this thing? The metal paint itself will smooth everything out so we can keep playing with our paint to get a nice travel of the colors without it getting overwhelming. We can go back to our darker color. Mix 
a little of that with our glaze. Because bronze really can get dark. So we can get that nice and mixed in there. We get that nice deep dark sheen and edge to it. Effectively at the beginning we were just sketching out our values, right? And then when we use these glazes at the end we can just bring it all together in sort of whatever way we think is best. So we can do a little silver mix with maybe a little bit of that bronze so we lighten it up a little bit. Right? You can kind of tint this however you want. And then obviously at the end we would take the star in the middle. We would make that a different color. Eight points, painting fast. Do do do. There we go. Right? We would edge it in our silver because we always want to have our, so we'll use our same pale burnt metal here to create our edge and our point of contrast. Now we got a nice sharp edge line on there where our light is catching along the uh, the edge of the of the of the bronze. At the same time, we can take a nice sharp brush if we want. We can get some of that black ink, any of the black ink. You could use any black ink for this, but there's like these nice little creases and cracks in this armor, so we could take those and run some of that black ink into there. To show where this guy's gotten hacked, where his shield has taken some, some slices. Okay. And we can take a little silver and we could edge that in the opposite way. I just noticed I missed a little spot here. There we go. But there you go. That's effectively how you do bronze true metallic metal. And you can see, you know, I can keep pushing this contrast around. That's what I really love about this. I can keep pushing this down darker and darker and darker. I can work in a little more of that black. Just keep using a little bit of that brown to kind of keep it alive and I can just push that edge real nice and dark. Right? So we really get that effect of that shadow. And you can see as we travel across there how it's capturing the reflection of the light. Effectively, we've gained control of the light back from the paint in this scale, right? To try to show how something of this size that was metal would actually react when it was, you know, if it was scaled up. If the shield was the three feet tall or whatever it's portrayed as being. Okay. So there you go. That's true metallic bronze. Like I said, if you don't have the, you know, the ore paints, that's okay. That's no big deal. You can still certainly do this method. You can just replace it with, like I said, the scale 75, like chestnut and black. If you don't have those, you can use the, um, just good, your good old friend Agrax. Maybe a slight, slight touch of Nolan oil or whatever in there at your but your very deepest shadows, okay? So don't feel like you've gotta have these exact paints. As per usual, you can, you can get down the same road in any kind of car and arrive at the same destination, all right? 
that's one of my things. People often ask me for recipes, and that's like saying, I want to drive to California. Uh, didn't you drive to California? Yes, I did. Oh, what kind of car did you drive? You don't want to ask what kind of car I drove. You want to ask how I got there. Okay? So, there you go. That's true metallic bronze. Uh, I hope that's useful for you. Uh, I hope that gives you some ideas for how to breathe some, some interesting life and light and shadow and reflection into your own true metallic bronze. Uh, but, as always, if you liked that, give it a like. Uh, subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. There are new videos here every week. But as always, uh, I appreciate you very much watching this one, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.